Hello everyone, Wangel here and welcome to Thrones of Britannia A Total War Saga. As you can see the game has finally come out and after waiting all day for it, me to actually have a chance playing it, I'm very excited to be starting this campaign and sharing the experience with you all. Now before we move on to the faction selection screen, just two things. Number one is, while this is sort of a day one release video, so to speak, with me starting the campaign today, future episodes will be coming out on Monday, replacing my Eastern Roman Empire campaign for Total War Attila, now that the campaign has come to an end. So for future episodes, keep an eye out on Mondays. Secondly, I'm just going to be a bit fanboy here because I just want to point out how great I find the artwork for this. I think Creative Assembly did a very good job of doing it. Just the aesthetic, the style of it, when things like, it looks like a big puppet show basically. And I don't know, I just really, really like it. And yeah, I'm going to be glushing over it when I see it in the campaign. So yeah, enough of fanboy and note, let's get straight into the game. So as you can see, I have started a campaign. I just wanted to check out the uh, style and make sure I know where everything was. So I'm not going to be spending five minutes like I did trying to find out how to look at the sort of character profile rather than look at the gen overall one that you get from going on to the family tree. So yeah, I just wanted to do that. But we're going to be starting a new campaign. Now, I did give you guys the opportunity to vote on which faction you want to see me play as for this Let's Play. And after having a look at the results before starting this video, the winning faction is actually all the way over here with the Viking Sea Kings. And Sudrea has actually won. So, we'll let's go on here and check it out. Now, as you can see, we will be starting up here in the north of Scotland along the western coast. And our faction leader will be Eric. Okay. Nice enough looking bloke, I guess, from the picture. So our cultural features as the Sea Kings is that we will have expedition. The world is yours for the taking. Send your ships to conquer new lands. Not quite quite sure what that means exactly, and we can't highlight it by going over here. So we'll find out in the game, no doubt. We've just got tribute. Other kingdoms pay tribute as a sign of their submission. Gain tribute from other factions to gain bonuses. So I think that's something we might, uh, once we conquer factions, we can get them as tributaries or something like that maybe. I don't know. Immune to seasickness and high seas attrition, that's going to be useful. Now it seems that we're pretty isolated up here in the north. We do have, what, well, one, two, say so three factions bordering our lands. So depending on our diplomatic relationship with them, we may be able to go after them. But if we have immunity to seasickness and high seas attrition, we will be able to actually go across Britain pretty easily. So we could attack Ireland, Wales, or even come down along England somewhere along the coastline. So a very nice opportunity for us to even march all the way down here, for example, and start take Cornwall and push our way upwards from there. We can see what happens. As to Drea, we do have the Field of Assembly, an assembly of free men and lawmakers who meet to decide the factors of the day. It sends the army on missions to keep them busy. So it sounds like something like Medieval 2's um, system where you, that you get issued missions you need to complete. If you do, you get units or money or have you. We get extra supplies in foreign territory for all armies to represent the fact that we are a pillaging horde. And it seems our army has got good unit diversity and we do have a lot of good infantry. So something for us to bear in mind when it comes to setting up the faction. So anything else we want to do? You can see I'm playing on very hard. After playing hard on Attila, I want a little bit more of a challenge given the fact that I was able to complete the game nearly two decades or a decade and a half <coughs> into from when I was supposed to. So I want to try on very hard. Victory conditions, what we got for the here. We've got short and long ones, and we've got three different ways of winning. We've got short, fame, conquest, or kingdom. I think this is um, kingdom unique. I'm not entirely sure. It depends on our culture. And our ultimate victory is we need to complete any one of these and then eliminate the Viking invasion fleets. That sounds like it might be some sort of end game um, sort of setup. So we'll have to see what happens when we get to that point. But yeah. That's everything I think we need to talk about, so let's go straight to starting the campaign. Now for those if that may be interested in which other factions came up, second place was East Angle, which would have made us play down here on this side of the map, and third was Joint Third between Stratclut, the Welsh faction that I believe is, I can't remember now, I think it's about here on the map, and Northumbria. 
So it would have been a nice diverse bit. We could have been here, we could have been up here and what have you. But I think Sadrea will be a nice uh, faction to play as. So we just have to wait for it to load up. It's actually loaded up a lot more quickly than it did when I first tried it out. So, start the campaign and check out the video. The great army may have terrorized England, but we have preyed on these isles for decades. The sea is in our blood. From our island homes we set out for glory and plunder. But we don't just want to raid and pillage. We want to create a mighty kingdom. A strong king can lead us to glory, so we can build our legacy. By sea, no throne is beyond our reach. In time, all these lands will be ours. I have to say, I really enjoyed that beginning sequence. The Western sequence. Isles are your fiefdom, but you deserve more. Your people are sea raiders and fighters with the drive to take on the world. Strengthen your hold on the Isles and be ready to take advantage of the instability in the South. While the Southerners squabble, you can become the true power in Britannia. One of your armies is stationed at your capital, ready to defend it. Your other army is well placed to combat the rebels to the east. Crush this local threat to secure your holdings. Okay, so here we go. So we've been told basically our first objective, it seems, is to take out the rebels. You can see on the east just over here. And in fact, it looks like my mission issued is to do the same thing. Eliminate the rebels in Apocrosian and we get internal stability. Plus 5 public order for all regions and plus 50% unit replenishment. That will be good once we start actually recruiting units. Since the me recruitment mechanics in this game remind me a little bit of Medieval 2 in the sense that you can only recruit so many of them at a time and they were, uh, you have to basically build them up. So you have like, may have one unit to begin with, but if you wait longer, you can have two units you can uh, have recruited in one go. But once you recruit a unit, you still have to basically wait for it to be replenished to represent that the unit is getting mustered. So it could take a little while for everyone to get over there. So I like that little mechanic, but that will help out. So here's our army here. If we click it out and check it out, it's led by our king, it seems, Eric. So let's check out Eric if we can. So let's see what he's like. Apparently we can't just click on him, can we? Ah, here we are. So here's my faction leader as well. So Eric is a good commander. He's three stars with one point of governance and one zeal. So he actually increases his own commander's aura, I mean, and increases unit morale when he's nearby. He's honorable in terms of personality. He's skillful, which means this trait cannot be lost. So it increases my melee skill for all the units in my army. That's a nice little bonus there. He's a seafarer, gives me extra movement on la navy. Men come first, actually reduces their upkeep. Which, hang on a second, let me, if I remember correctly. Yeah, look at this. Yeah, we get minus 50% upkeep cost for all units in his force already. And when the men come first, we get minus 10% extra. So we get minus 60% upkeep cost in his army. How cool is that? And if we're defending, depending? If we're defending, we actually get extra morale. That's a really good bonus. We also got his wife, Alfhild. Oh, I'm probably butchering the pronunciations. So I do apologize if I do. She's 38. He's 43. And he, she is renowned, so it improves his, both his command and his governance. She's a good wife to have, I must say. We will serve. All right. Well, we're going to have him attack the army, but before we do that, I just want to check out the rest of the our domains and see what's going on in the wider world before we then focus on little things like that. So, what we've got up here, one cat has already got low loyalty, Cormac. Let's have a look. So here is our sort of family tree at the moment. We've got Eric at the top with his wife Elfhild. We've got an older son called Ketil, who seems okay for loyalty right about now, but he hasn't got much going for him. We can check him out in a second. His wife, Osk, is a gossip apparently. What does this do? Decreases his 
both influence and loyalty. That's not much use. We're gonna get rid of her. How much is it gonna cost? Yeah, we can afford that. Goodbye. Okay, can we get a new wife instead? So apparently we've replaced Ask with a new one called Ask. So apparently Ketil has a thing for the name. And she actually increases his influence by one. You know what? We'll take a hand. There's a little better choice, I think, and improves his influence a bit. Okay, so he's now loyal, more loyal as a result, so that bit's been sorted out. And he's the command general, so he must be command of my other army back on my um, fac my sort of um, capital. Our other nobles are down here. In fact, let me, let me check out Kentil and see what he's like. So Kentil is a reasonable commander. He has no governance, a bit of zeal. And he's bloodthirsty, which increases the morale while attacking. He's vigorous, improving his command and zeal. Fearless. A rider, which increases cavalry units. And skillful as well. So this guy, I would like to be leading an army to attack places, rather than having him to stay at home. But for now, he can keep as a garrison for my uh, capital. His wife we can't see much about. We have a younger son then called Harkon, who is 14 years old. He will be long until he can actually join the family in leading armies. And we've got Ord, my daughter, who's 12. Okay. We've got Finbog, who's a statesman. He's a cap king's captain at the moment. Let's have a look. He's a land lover. He doesn't like uh, being on ships. It's a bit of a problem when you're the Viking Sea Kingdoms. He's persistent, he's renowned, he's a decent defender, and he's friendly as well. That could come in use for that defending army. I might swap him around, I think. We got Jisli, who is just a currently, he's a governor of one of my areas. Let's check him out. He's a preacher, plus 20% apparently bonus to church income. He's discreet. Urbane, boring, and he's trustworthy. Okay, he is going to make a good governor, especially with the fact that he's got three points of zeal. He just needs good governance. He needs some zeal in order to prove public order, though. And Cormac, you're apparently a governor, but you're not very loyal. What can I do to improve it? I could do that, but it'll cost me 2,000. The problem is, actually, is he's got more influence than me. So we need to reduce his influence if we want to try and improve it a little bit. So... We could actually spend that 2,000, although we can actually do this if we can. It's half the money, and we can actually lower his influence as a result. Let's do that. Okay, so people now whisper about the target behind their back, oft times when there's smoke, there's fire. So he's now lost two influence. So he's gone down to five, when Eric has remained at six. So by doing that, he's actually improved his loyalty, and we've sorted that out, nice and easy. He's also my Justicar, I noticed here, but should improve his loyalty some more. Hmm. You're my Chamberlain, and you are my King's Captain. And you're my heir. We can't actually give you another title. Okay. Governors, both of you are governors already, and we can get another eight if we need to. Something to bear in mind, we don't have any more provinces. Okay, what we can do about estates? Do we have any right now? We... nope. We must construct a state given buildings, con conquer regions containing these buildings, use the strip of state action to gain them back, or kill an estate owner. Okay, well we don't actually have any estates right now, so we can't do anything about that. Nice and easy. Okay, so next bit. Let's do some re um, building. We do have 2,563 left, so I would like to try and do some building. Um, let's see, we've got food. Food's okay right now, we can actually improve it in a bit, especially when I start recruiting because we need food as part of our upkeep. War fever is improving right now. Tributes. Those in your farm must know their place and pay tribute. Increase tribute by taking part in battles, ransoming warriors and form expeditions. Tribute naturally declines as time passes. So at the moment we actually lose, have less animal morale and we get 2% to our market thanks to apparently recent battles. And then we got Expedition 1. So apparently we have to do certain things, but we can actually apparently send an expedition off to further my trade, influence, and territorial designs. Okay, it'll be an interesting mechanic trial. 
But we're going to spend some money. First of all, I'm going to see about upgrading our long haul, it seems, up to a great haul. That allows me to get a few more un uh, units in the garrison, and we should hopefully then be able to upgrade the settlement and start getting some stuff. So that'll be that bit. We can see now maybe about upgrading the fishing village or something like that in Stonish Way. But if we look at our settlements, they're very scattered right now. So Bornese is here, our capital. The other part of the province is up here then, in Stonish Way. If we check it and... Dunbrenka is here as well, so the one province is scattered along these islands. And if we check out over here, we have a poor Croson and Orion. I've probably butchered that as well. Whereabouts is that? Ah, it's all the way down here. So Orion happens to be a monastic community at the moment, a monastery buildings. So we're going to get money coming in from the church, it seems. And we also got a boat haven as well. Okay. A minor settlement belong here, it seems, to Gal Golden. Okay, we'll have to keep an eye out of these. These might be something for me, the potential target for me to come and attack. So they're all the way down here as well. Okay. Do Kelton. Okay. So now we've had a look at that, let me quickly have a look at diplomacy so we can see what's going on. Right. So we zoom out slightly. Okay, so we've got Okunea up here in the top, if we click on them. So they're the border right here, but we actually got a military alliance with them. So that's something I would like to keep. They don't own any provinces that I have, so I don't have to try and fight it to claim it all back. We've got Futurian here. We've got Defensive Pact with Susan, which are down here, it seems. They're dependent on the fight and aggressive. It looks like, though, they share a province with... Ognea, so we'll probably be having a fight at some point in order to try and control this province. If that's the case, I may get involved so I can take what looks like to be another one down here. But we'll see what happens with that. These guys, though, are probably going to be the ones I go after, first of all, because they do have territory that I want, basically. So we'll do that. But in the meantime, let's see, can we get... How do you guys feel about me? Our relationship is deteriorating because of previous battles against. Okay. Don't make me regret admitting you to my. Can we give you some friendship? Intriguing. Oh, friendship. Nope. Okay, we could be given money, but I'm not going to bother about that. Instead, let's just have a quick look here. Uh, you guys are really happy with me, but we are going to be going to fight you at some point. This is going to be good on terms with Deflin down here in Ireland. You are welcome here. What right. have you for We've got me? trade. I think. Like, I remember having a look at it when I was checking out before, I was doing it as uh, Resex, just so I can give it a go and see, get familiar with the map and that. But it does look like a lot of the factions do get trade, at least from what here. I remember, like what here. We've already got trade with them, so it's nothing we can really improve on, we can't get rid of it anyway. I will listen like, see? To your propositions. Can't do anything about trade, so it must happen automatically in the game. Okay, anyway, that's that bit done. So... In fact, no, you know what I'm going to do. Maybe not be able to get it so much with Stratklut, but if we can go down to Gwynedd, I just like the idea of you getting a declaration of friendship. Year. Yep, sufficient. You have I want to become friendly with Wales, what can I say? Who owns this one, though? Sesuluk. That's interesting, because this pro like province here, so to speak, is actually where I live. I live along in this um, county here. In fact, I've and I know Abatavi reasonably well. Handawi, I've been to once or twice, or at least around there. So yeah, that's my. If anyone's interested, this is my um, home county. Right. Anyway, let's get some battles going because we're near the end. Oh, we're twenty minutes in. We haven't killed anyone yet. Let's go after them. It looks like it should be able to take them out straight away. In fact, it is quite balanced. Thinking about it. So they got two units of spearmen, one unit of axemen, some bowmen, some skirmishers, and presumably skirmishers. It does say raiders, so presumably skirmishers. And their general with their bodyguard. We have two archers, two axemen, one unit of spearmen, and we have my general Eric, who seems to be actually leading a unit of swordsmen rather than anyone on horseback. Interesting. Okay, let's just fight it out. 
It's the first battle. It's fairly balanced. I think it's an opportunity for me to get into the swing of things, especially since we are playing on very hard. It's not a level I think I often play as when it comes to Attila and that, just because there's never really go around to it. So I don't like the idea. If it's going to be hard, I'd rather have it because the game's a bit hard, not because it's just artificially harder. And still, it's not two things. It's annoying when you have to try and deal with stuff like increased public order problems. Why? Because it's hard. Anyway, this looks like a nice map. We do have, I like the artwork applies to that map as well. It looks like we're going to be fighting along a hill or something like that here. So it could be an idea for me to, I think I'm going to deploy on top of the hill. And we can be in a position then to go after the enemy then and fight from an upwards angle. So we'll have the advantage from fighting uphill. We'll see what happens when we start the battle. Okay, it's a dry day. I think we can accept that. Let's have a quick look at the map. So we've got all the woods and that down here. You might notice the graphics aren't the best. It's a compromise I have to do in order to actually play the game reasonably well. I may muddle around with the graphics a little bit more in later episodes, so I can see if I may be getting a bit sharper, but unfortunately it's due to the strength of my computer. I can only do so much, so I feel you have you want good graphics and that, you have to check out some other YouTubers. But if you want some decent commentary, I like to think, as well as some strategy and that involved, then feel free to continue with mine. Anyway, so here's the hill I'm thinking of deploying. We can't actually see the enemy right now. So that's a slight annoyance. Might be an idea though. Yeah, let's put him up on top of the hill, I think. Or we can use the tree line here in order to. Yeah, let's do that. We're going to have. Let's see. We're going to use the trees here so we can march through undetected and we'll be able to attack from the. Nope. Wrong. Completely wrong angle. It's better. Let's see. Spearmen will have you guys on this flank. Archers will have you here. And General will have you on this flag. That seems like a good plan. So yeah, we can use the trees then to advance forward. Okay, thank you. I know how to use light infantry. This might be hard to believe in some of my videos, but I do know how to use them. Okay. I'm going to ask them to march through here. So we can use the trees then to get into range without getting spotted. We still can't see the enemy anywhere. So, but we can see all the way down here. The only bits we can't see is sort of this area here. So it may have been that they've deployed in the tree line themselves. Or they might be on the other side of this hill somewhere. We'll have to see. If they do have deployed down here or somewhere, wherever it is, that could actually work out for me then, because then they'll have to fight uphill in order to get to my position. And we'll have the advantage then as a result. So while we're waiting for my troops to get into position, let's have a quick look at some things. So my elite sword infantry are pretty decent. They have expert charge defense. Oh, okay. There's their armies. They're trying to do the same idea as me. Interesting. The enemy approaches. Okay. What's we got here coming the way? I'll... All right. Um, you guys. Which one was it? Here. Come off to skirmish mode. We don't need you in skirmish mode. Thank you. You guys get back in here. All right. Can you guys, you guys I think I should have, you do. What we'll do, we're going to have these guys get into cover, when they stop moving. I'm going to have them go into what's this stance, it's called Shield Castle. And basically it's like entering a stationary to studio. You can see my troops are getting into a formation to protect themselves against enemy fire. Which is quite useful because we've got their skirmishers shooting at us right now. It should be okay, we won't take that many casualties I think. Well, I'll have my archers come through a little bit closer. Not too close, because I don't know how the game works with arcing our sh shots over the enemy. Seems like we can do that. Alright, you guys should be in range. You are. So, can you please take out their skirmishes for me? Alright. So there we go. We're going to take some, a bit of fire, but uh, my sh shield castle will hold against them. And I have to say, they're quite cool. I mean, these guys are solid. I mean, they're not even moving. <laughs> there you go. So, the skirmishers shouldn't have much in the way of 
plane ammo left. They've got three lots left and then they will be forced to charge in. The rest of the enemy and then will probably be cut involved at some point then as well. Okay. Archers have got 11 shots, so a little while to left to go, but it's okay. In the meantime, let's have a keep checking out what we've got. Rally, that's my skill. Expert charge defense increases melee attack and damage against charging enemies. That's good. Discipline does not suffer a morale penalty when the enemy dies. Cool. Encourage, but boosts my enemy. Can hide, and is a raider. Can set building on fire, can cause more fire damage with torches, and capture faster than other units. Okay. Hide, expert charge defense. Okay. Axemen. Hide and forest, expert charge defense. Set. Up. Same with you guys, yep. Snipe can remain hidden when firing. That could come in useful at some point. Hide. Persistent fatigue. Flaming shots. Does bonus damage against cavalry. Can maybe switch this over if we're gonna. Nope. Now about to start moving into position. We've got a decent thing though, so we should hopefully. Yep. Are they really going to try and outflank me that much? Yeah. You're really going out of your way, aren't you, to try and get around the, my troops? Okay, keep doing that by all means. Okay, here comes the rest of the enemy army. Their general is leading the way. If you want to make a suicidal attempt towards my spearmen, and by all means, feel free to do so. Okay, how are you guys doing? Can I persuade my general to charge forward and to attack them? Alright. Okay, you guys are starting to waver. Our general is under attack! Let's have you guys use flame and shot against these. Oh, we set the forest on fire. Whoops. <laughs> okay, maybe not set the fire arrows. I don't think it actually does anything in terms of like, uh, it's not going to hurt our troops being wiped by the fire. But it's maybe not the best situation to do. Set the forest on fire while we're standing in it, you know? Okay, this unit's about to die because it's decided to attack see, us in combat. Free before our might. Okay, um, let's see, put you guys in guard mode because we don't want you chasing after the enemies. We want them to come to us. Okay, you guys just stay in position. Okay. I think you guys can actually move forward a bit now. We'll have you come out of the shield wall and we'll have you move forward slightly. Archers will have you come up behind them. Like so. Maybe we can persuade them to come and attack us. Here they come. Just double check. We don't have it. No, these only do things against missile block. They don't actually do anything like improving our melee attack or anything like that. It can't just do attacking. But if they want to come at us, by all means. Alright. Okay. When you're ready, my man. Charge into the weir. Come and attack their archers as well. They seem to want to get involved in the action. So by all means, let them. Okay. You guys can come down here and attack as well. Now my general can be in position down here and then to attack us. Them. Okay, we're about to beat them. They're about to charge into my spear line, the fools. Okay, general, we can go after this unit of levy. Okay, ready to defeat their unit of spearmen. Now the general's getting involved. Bad idea of him attacking my spear line. Alright. We'll have to be a bit careful. They may be retreating right now, but they are going to come back, and my archers are right here, so they might be a bit vulnerable. Spearline, we're going to spear We're going to pull you back out. My axemen should be able to deal with them pretty easily. We're going to have you guys come down and attack them. Hopefully, we can actually get in the way of the charge. There we go. We've blocked it. Okay, you guys are basically all going to be running up. Okay. 
general is dead. We can chase after them now. Everyone can come off to guard mode now. You can chase after the enemies once you've them to retreat. Come down and just kill as many of them as you can. Uh, we're not going to be able to quite catch up with that army, with that unit, so we're going to have them charge into here. Get a nice flank charge into the rear of the enemy's units. Okay. We've managed to win. Perfect. Alright, are we going to be able to catch up to these units or not? I mean, they are tired, and we're pretty fresh, so maybe we should be able to catch up and do some damage to them. But it just looks like they're going a bit faster than we are. Oh no, so now we are slowly catching up. Okay. To be honest, I think we can end the battle here at this point. We're not going to be able to catch up with the other army units. So, there we go. A decisive victory. Let's check out the end results. I like the fact they brought back now the kills again. I don't remember that being in Attila. I don't really notice, to be honest. But this time around, we can actually see how many have been killed. Like, I lost 78 men, but the enemy only killed 75. So I've managed to take three casualties from friendly fire on my side of things. But we managed to kill 248, and they lost 248. So they didn't take any friendly fire. But it means only I only got 82 left. We've lost 78, but that's okay. We can t see. It did say up on the top about tribute, about ransoming people. So let's do that. Hurry along. Enemy killed in battle. For has it's been deceased. We need to show your metal. A firm hand and an eye to the wider world are required if you are to gain the recognition you deserve, desire, and the tribute you deserve. So we managed to improve the market slightly. Yeah, it's gone up by to ten now. I've just noticed. War fever has increased, improving my public order, my fame, and my morale. Okay, can we finish off that Enemy army? We cannot. We can go after the next turn though, so we'll make sure to do that. Otherwise, I think that's really everything I can do for my turn. So, let's end it. Just double check. Don't need anything about taxes. Technology is a thing. I would like to start doing research, but in order to do so, we need to unlock things I saw in the other one. So, for example, here. We need to recruit 10 sword and or axe infantry units before we can start doing military research along here. Likewise with civics, we need to basically upgrade buildings, which is why I've started getting it so I can upgrade my main buildings first of all. And we can see then about upgrading the rest of them, then like libraries, get some leadership and stuff like that. So let's end the turn. Nice cup of tea there. So in the next turn, once we've finished off the rebel army, what I plan to do is hire some more in infantry. And if I can, I would like to try and get some, um, whatchamacallit, horsemen. Just so I can try and kill enemy units and chase them down afterwards. Um, I don't know if, what my options are. We might have some melee, we might have skirmishes. We'll check it out. We'll see what the price is as well. Like melee would be quite nice in order to get that weird charge into the enemy's units. But on the other hand, skirmishes are faster. They'll be just more useful to chase down enemy units. Especially if we can get them behind uh, the once our lines collide and start fighting. If we can get the skirmishers behind them, they'll be able to throw the javelins into the vulnerable rear of the enemy. So that could be a thing as well. We'll have a look see how much it's going to cost, because at the end of the day, it's going to cost me money as well to do. So we'll have to see how much we can afford and what would affect my income as a result. Okay, so we'll do that. Let's close that a second. Let's go off and finish off this rebel army first of all, while I get a chance. There we go. Nice easy auto resolve. Let's see. We do have the general's the ranged advantage, but we don't have... Let's just go to the standard. There we go. That's killed them off. Took a few more casualties, especially among these two units, but otherwise we're okay. We can just... We'll ask for them to be ransomed My again. There we go. That's the rebels dealt with. 
So now we've got internal stability, so for 5 turns we have plus 5 public order and 50% unit replenishment. War fever has increased as well. Okay, so I want to hire some units, but I can't. the way I have to do them, I can't just go and click on recruitment. I need to either march them down towards the settlement here in order to do it, or put them into fortify stance, because we don't have things like force march in there anymore. So this will allow me to get the unit replenishment, this one will allow me to raid, but I'm not going to do that in my own territory for obvious reasons. So what I will do, I'm going to ask them to come down to here. I would like them to eventually move back to the settlement, but I want to start getting that recruitment done right away. So you guys can come here, and put your size in fortified stance. Let's see, five turns until we can get these uh, units pretty much back to full strength, say three turns. Yeah, let's say three turns. So let's have a quick look if we can move quits. So yeah, as you can see, we have like here, for example, we have the amount of available units and the amount we can get in pretty much a maximum of. So we can just choose, oh yeah, let's have six units of Axe Eastman fighters. We have to do it like that. Okay, but we're looking at this, I'm thinking we'll have another unit of Spearmen. Just because then we can actually uh, have a one on each flank. We could get these more expensive spear healed men, but they cost a lot more money. These only cost 16 a turn. Um, archers could come in useful, but we'll, we'll go for that straight away. Levy axe infantry. Let's go for another unit of eastman axemen. Because what we can do, if you notice on the end, on the side here, each one has both an upkeep for gold and upkeep for food. So we're going to have to make sure that we, because we've got 30 food at the moment, we can only really recruit 3 units, so we've got 2. Can, what should I recruit last? We've got Eastman Horseman. Now this would be good for melee calf. It's got decent attack skill, damage, attack bonus and that. But it does mean 100 upkeep. Skirmish and calf, we can get 2 units for that. But they're not the best, in all honesty. Hmm. Let's for the moment go for the scouts. Like I, I don't have to necessarily use them in combat, apart from maybe doing morale damage. Oh no, we need can't hire four units because we don't have the food. Let's just go for the unit of horsemen then. There we go. That's that. So as you can see now, even the ones we've recruited, we have to wait now for them to replenish to represent the fact that we get we're mustering the men together into a force. So that will be a thing, we'll have to wait now and we can move them back to the settlement next turn. Uh, general details, Eric can be upgraded. Hmm, what do we want to give him? So the way we upgrade in Friends of Britannia is by going to your followers and you can assign different followers. Traits and items are things that they will earn themselves depending on what happens, but these are the ones we can control. So for example, Champion incre increases command and my melee skill for his units. Scribe will give me extra 5% income and governance. Bard will improve his zeal, which makes it so enemies can't move as much in the province. That could be interesting. Forager gives him extra replenishment. That could actually come in useful right now. And it can eventually make it so he's immune to snow attrition. Nice. Pillager for weight and income, quartermaster for upkeep. No, it's not upkeep, sorry, campaign movement. This is upkeep. Priests improve loyalty and decreases the enemy's public order. Okay. That can actually, high end actually gives it so the enemies get attrition. Wow. Siege equipment. Okay. I think for this first one, I'm going to give him. I'm going to give him quartermaster. So this improves his movement ability by 5%. So we'll do that. Okay. And uh, what next? Gilsley, my governor. He's the one who's in charge of the uh, religious settlement, so hence it's quite good that he's the preacher. He's very good at governance, but not so much at anything else. And he is reasonably loyal. He could be better, but it also could be worse. So instead of rushing to give him a priest right now, I think I'm going to give you... Let's give you a bard. This improves the zeal by one. It means then I increase his public order as well. So we'll give you that. 
Public order should be pretty decent right now, thanks to the fact that we have uh, the uh, bonus from uh, internal stability. But we can keep that going for now. I think next turn there we'll make sure to get some food going for one of these. Otherwise that's really everything we can do this turn. In fact, let's have a quick look on the map. Alright. So yeah, I'm thinking that Gal Golden will be my first target for expansion because they do have areas that belong to me. They share the same pro province with me. For a fact, we can find it. Faction ownership. We'll just stick to it. Yeah. So we need to basically take their territories here. Okay. Yeah, that would be my first target. But we'll have to build an army up and send it down there, first of all. But, thinking about it actually, I'm going to end the episode now at this point. I think after we've got two turns in, we've got a battle in as well, which is always a good start for any campaign. So, yeah, things have started off so well for us at Sudrea. But in next episode, we'll continue building up the army, and we'll start marching it down towards um, the, the faction south of us, so we can finish taking the province of ours. Maybe get a new province into the bargain as well. We'll just have to see what's going to happen with the Oakley Islands faction to our east. And whether or not they're going to be trying to march on south. If they do, that would hopefully give me an opportunity to try and snatch some land from there to, from the faction there as well. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But we'll see that in the next episode. So I hope you join me on Monday now for episode 2 of Thrones of Britannia. But until then, thank you for watching. I shall see you then. Goodbye for now.